PVE. Grit Ward. Not usable. Crit Ret. Not usable. Empowering Breaker. Decent for raids. Slash Conditioning. Not usable. Enchanted Ward. S tier. Strike Conditioning. Not usable. Shirking Energy. Not usable. Actually, it's okay. Niche. Uh, flame Conditioning. Not usable. Sturdy. Not not usable. Uh, physical. Very, very niche. Fire har or Harnessing in general. It's okay. Thrust Conditioning. Not usable. Health. Pretty good. Thorny Reflection. Niche. Probably not usable. Shirking Fort. Not usable. Shirking Heals. Obviously not usable. Elemental Aversion. It's okay, but not as good as Enchanted Ward. There's a few bosses where it's good. A Vigor. Pretty meh. Okay, Enchanted Ward's a little better than that. Invig. Meh. Hasted Vigor. No. Freedom. No. Refreshing. Good. Okay, that's your PvE tier list. Done. <laughs> like, I, I don't think there's a debate with any of these is the problem, but I, I don't think anyone's made a video on like whether you need to run for PvE, but that, that's it. Run Enchanted Ward. Health is decent. Refreshing's decent. Uh, like, you really just want Enchanted Ward, Refreshing, run a weapon perks. Uh, for your last slots, you can go Health, you can go Harnessing, you can go Empowering Breaker. Uh, you probably won't be able to fit Elemental Version. That's it. Mandatory Weapon Perks, also A tier. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's just, you run these four pieces. PvE is really, really boring for optimization. It is, you run the exact same thing everywhere. The only thing that changes week to week is your gem setup. That is it. Even for tank? Oh yeah, even for tank, this is all you run. It's, it is this simple. That is it. That's all you do for, for PvE. Two minute tier list. <laughs> it is really, really easy. Does conditioning do anything for tanks or you don't really care because gems? In order for conditioning to work in PvE, you need to take a hit before it to proc. You don't really want to be taking hits. So it's like not that us usable. It's like very, very niche. And even if you're doing conditioning, it would be elemental conditioning that would change from week to week. And if you were to optimize gear that way, you'd be in a night like it would be a nightmare. The other thing too is the gem cap is fifty percent. You can get above fifty percent without conditioning, and conditioning won't uh, bypass that cap. You could bypass the cap without conditioning, but conditioning doesn't help you at all. So it's like conditioning is like it is literally not useful for PvE. Like it, it just does not work because normally you have that fifty percent cap. For some reason, if you put gems and you put the amulet perk, you could bypass that cap because AGS does the calculation after those, I guess. Uh, so conditioning doesn't work, but everything else will to bypass the cap. So there's like no reason. You can get enchanted refreshing health from faction vendor 675 gear score. Yeah, like you run that, like you're, you're pretty much bissed out. It's just like it's 675, which isn't as good. The other noteworthy thing for PvE is the gear score, like, People will be upset for me, but I actually tested this in game. Gear score literally doesn't matter for basically any PVE mode. The only PVE mode that matters at this point is mutations. Uh, even for raids, gear score doesn't matter. It's all about your armor rating. And if you want to optimize for damage, you want a high weapon gear score. Your armor gear score doesn't matter. Your jewelry doesn't matter. Like you literally just need to hit these perks. Hit these perks. Doesn't matter what gear score you're at. Well, okay, maybe try to be above like 675 for most of these things. Uh, or at 675. And then that, that's it. Like, you go into anything, it'll just be fine. Like, I would bring chat into this, but it's literally just this simple for PvE. Like, nothing here is really that useful. Isn't Thorny Reflection a PvP-only perk, too? Yeah, it's PvP PvP only. Okay, also not usable. There we go. <laughs> just made the list even shorter. Is it a problem that PvE is like this in terms of what's optimized? Probably. Does AGS care? No. Has it changed in the past three years? No. So it's probably just going to remain the same, to be honest. Tell that to rave leaders asking 700 plus gear score, pretty please. I mean, you can clip it and ship it to them. Like, gear score literally doesn't matter. I can go show you guys in game that gear score doesn't matter, too. It's literally just all off of armor. I just have to wait 12 minutes for the game to boot up because every update, the game takes longer to boot up, but I could show it to you real quick. It matters for attributes? Exactly. That is the only thing that matters. It just matters for attributes. You need to hit your thresholds, right? For that raid I just did. 
thresholds were 50 con, which wasn't even mandatory. 350 int, 200x. Hit those thresholds, you're perfectly fine. You can go beyond that to some degree, like you could hit 25 strength, that would be a DPS boost. If you hit 25 focus, that could be a small DPS boost, but like those aren't mandatory. If you run a uh, tomb leather pants, you should be able to hit those as well. The reason why people are asking for 710 is they're hoping that that will mean that you have higher DPS weapons. If people are being really smart about what they... It, it worked this way in Albion too, actually. With Albion, guilds mandatory or mandate that you need to have a certain power level or higher. But it really, for per class, it only depends on what your class thing is. So like for support, you only cared about your armor. Your weapon did not really matter. Uh, so I could, I could show you guys this. I have a spot in Brim. I tested this out before. And... Uh, so basically, I could take damage with the current armor I have, and then I could take off my offhand, and you'll see I'll, I take the same damage, even though I just tanked my gear score. So, like, gear score is not an, a contributing factor. And the two contributing factors into the damage formula normally are average gear score and weapon gear score. So, just maximize your weapon gear score. It is quite literally that simple. Just PvE, maximize weapon gear score... Get Enchanted Ward, get Refreshing. Health is okay because people run super low con and you don't really want to get one shot if you could help it. And that's about it. There are some mobs down there. I ha There's a dog over here that I like to use for testing PvE stuff. Because it's right next to an area that you can uh, hop on and off so you can de-aggro it. Like if I aggro this mob, like it's a pain in the ass to de-aggro that mob. So I like to use the dogs. Okay. There's my dog. Doggo. Hit me. Okay, 869. 434, 434. Use the 434. I'm gonna hop up here. It's gonna de aggro him. It's gonna pull me out of combat. When I'm out of combat, take off my offhand. So we're looking for 434. Aggro him again. 8, 869, same thing. 434. Gear score doesn't matter. I just dropped my gear score. Does not matter. Okay. So, yep, that's it for PBE. Just don't care about your gear score too much. If you want to maximize damage, use high gear score weapons. Hit your attribute perks that you need. And that's it. So if I want to be successful setting up plugs, I should ask to link weapons. Yeah, you should ask to link weapons. You should honestly ask to link gear, but it's less about mandatory things for gear. It's more about having, like, enchanted ward and stuff like that. You need to make sure you have coatings. Uh... So, you want to have coding, you want to have a ward pot, which I just used my last one, or otherwise I'd show that. Uh, and that's it. Like, appropriate gems is nice, but that's a little extra. Like, it's literally just 90% setting up your gear, it's not actually the gear square of your gear. And that that's literally it for PB.